Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in, NFC and AFC Championship Reaction and Recap. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And who we uh, we we got our, our last, I guess, full Sunday of football out of the way. Uh, maybe not as entertaining as we were hoping, but uh, but it was football. And we've only got so many of these a year, right? So it, I'm going to be appreciative of that. Well, that's it. That's it. That's we that's, got we got one more game left on the schedule, whew, and then we got the XFL. So we we're gonna talk about that. Our uh, our group chat, of course, uh, is trying to figure out what team all of us are gonna be pulling for this year. Uh, we'll we'll talk. Let let me get through the the rundown first. Uh, obviously, we're talking NFC and AFC championship reaction. Uh, you can go to the website winningcureseverything.com, Get all of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, po- uh, it, it, just everything. Social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you leave a comment. Tell us what you think about the games that were played uh, between the 49ers and the Packers and the Chiefs and the Titans. Uh, we would like to hear your opinions on what happened in those games and if we missed anything. So, obviously, we're going to miss something. So, make sure you let us know in the comments uh, what we should have been paying attention to. Um, yeah, the show always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books along with a ton of other stuff going on. Go check out more information on the sports books and everything else over at tunicatravel.com. So in our, our group chat, um, we were discussing the XFL stuff. Uh, we were discussing how to pick a team to irrationally support. Like, emotionally, for no reason, we are invested in this team for no reason. Uh, is there a way to do that? Well, I, 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 a first I would have to take at least... 20 minutes and figure out who these teams are, where they are. I need to know who their coaches are. And then I need to know a little bit about the roster. I don't need to lie. I need, definitely need to know quarterback and, and I guess some star player uh, situation type things. I know I'm not a big game Bob guy. So whoever his team is, I'm going to root against. Well, his, and, his is and, the Dallas and, Renegades. and scientifically that's how you come up with who you're going to root for or who you're going to root against. Yeah, and uh, and that's that's just kind of how you piecemeal something brand new, and then you hope Vince McMahon put together a plan where this thing might last at least an entire season, <laughs> so you don't start liking somebody, and then in the middle of the season it dissolve, and you don't even get to see could they win the championship? Yeah, <laughs> what happens? That's my my thought process was I would like for it to be a team that was like at least close you know, at, at relatively close so that we could go to a game. Uh, but the guys brought up Seattle, and I'm like, there ain't no way I'm getting to Seattle. So then I'm well, like, there aren't, there aren't, there's, I mean, where we live in the Memphis area, there's not a team close to us at all. The the closest one, I think, is Dallas, and then I think that's it. But we'll we'll go through, like, an XFL preview kind of thing just to, <laughs> just to break it down and see who's playing where and all that kind of mess. Uh, we'll, we'll do that before that season starts. Uh, because it starts the uh, the sun or the Saturday after the Super Bowl, is that right? I can't. I, I don't. I don't really know when it's, it starts. I do know it's supposed to start the week after the Super yeah. Bowl. Um, I don't. I don't know what day of the week they're going to try to be on or what any, any, anything about their schedule yet at all. Uh, I will tell you this: I, I'm I'm planning on taking a couple of trips this year by myself without the the wife and kids. But one of them will not be to the XFL. I, I will not be <laughs> wasting a weekend away. On, on going to an XFL game. Well, I was just talking about like the XFL championship because it, it I think nope. it's in Vegas. If it's in Vegas, uh, yeah, I guess. And it would depend on what the weekend is. If there's other stuff going on, etc. I, I need to know. I need to know what time of the year. Chris doesn't yeah. go to Vegas in the summertime. If uh, it, if the XFL Ever. championship is like the same weekend as the Final Four, then okay, I could maybe see myself oh. doing that. Well, yeah, but that's like, different. But I don't know that they'd want to do that because then they're competing with the Final Four. Uh, well, not really, because there's nothing on the Sunday of the Final Four. Um, I guess you're right. It's Saturday and Monday, so they could have Sunday. Yeah, and and you've got kind of a built-in audience because there's people that will be paying attention to sports. But I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll have to check schedules and all that kind of mess just to just to see. There's no telling what this thing's going to turn into. Um, let's go ahead and start our recap. Um, and I think that we need to start with. 
the the first game of the day because I think it was the the more entertaining. Well, yeah, I definitely think we'd go in order of what the games were. And so, uh, Chiefs thirty five, Titans twenty four, and let me pull up my my team sheet here, and we'll we'll go through a few stats and then we'll discuss like uh, what what happened here. Uh, twenty seven first downs for the Chiefs to twenty for the Titans. Uh, Rushing yards, I think, was the big thing. Like, if you look at total plays, it was pretty similar. 64 for the Chiefs, 58 for the Titans. Uh, total yards, 404 for the Chiefs, 295 for the Titans. Both had nine drives. Uh, passing yards, 292 for the Chiefs, 210 for the Titans. But if you look at the rushing numbers, 27 rushes for 112 yards for the Chiefs, 23 rushes for 85 yards. That's an average of 3.7 per rush for the Titans. Um, time of possession, I mean, it was dead even. It was within 20 seconds of each other. So, we'll say both had 30 minutes. It seemed like Kansas City held the ball uh, forever after the Titans held it for a really long time in the first uh, quarter and a half or so. That's uh, and that's And that's the fact. That's it. Is the Titans had all their time of possession in the first one and a half quarters. Yeah. And, and after they had that nine-minute-something drive where they score in the second quarter. Yeah, to make it 17-7. to seven. They they never had a long drive again. They couldn't get anything going after that. They got down and immediately got away from running the football. I, I still think they were able to run the football. I still think Henry, if every time he touched it, did he get six, seven yards? No. But every time he touched it, he still got positive yards for the most part. And there were many times where – They'd rush it on second and, you know, three to go, and he'd get one yard. And then they'd pull him off the field and wouldn't run him on third and two. And I'm thinking, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. And they yeah. did this against the Patriots also. They did this um, in that game as well. And I kept thinking every time they'd pull him off the field at third and one or third and two, I'm thinking, thank God. Thank God they're going to kill themselves because they're not smart enough to realize that big man can get two yards. You don't need a short goal line situation for you to rush the ball on third down. Yeah. I mean if you give him uh if you give him two chances to get three yards, I, I feel really good about the odds of him getting no three yards. Hundred percent. Like, um it was weird play calling by the time I think I think this is the first bad game we've on the national level saw Arthur Smith have. Um I, I think he, I think he kind of had well, his think, lunch eaten today. I, I, I think, think he, he got bullied and pushed around and taken out of his game plan. I don't think and the Titans, think he, or the Patriots game was a, a good game plan, uh, not offensively. Well, well no, no, I, I agree with you on that. I call I said the same thing, but just no one could stop Henry. Yeah, but so it, it he at least did continue to go to to Henry over and over and over again in that game, um, even if it wasn't on third down. But uh, but yeah, I I just I. I, I I think they believed a lot more in Tannehill than they should have. And I wonder, is this game going to save them from giving him, you and I talked about this a little off air, um, a monster contract? Well, I, I don't think it was just this game. I think the two games beforehand weren't won because of him. Like, if you look at the numbers today, 21 out of 31, 209 yards, two touchdowns. Not bad, but as far as being effective and efficient, uh, not not so much. You know, this was – it wasn't won or lost because of Tannehill necessarily, but, you know it, – it, I don't I, know, man. I, I, I think it was lost. I think it was lost because of Tannehill. I think that he wasn't able to make the the big plays and the big-time spots when he needed to. Like, he, he just – he couldn't do anything on third down. Like, that, there were three out of ten on third down and two out of three on fourth down. Um, I mean, Kansas City was six out of ten on third down and one out of one on fourth. So – that that's the difference between having a quarterback that can make those throws in third and medium to third and ten, as opposed to a guy that can't. You know, yeah. it, when when the threat of the run is there, and you've actually got Henry in the game on third down, um, it it feels like yeah, Tannehill can can make those throws because it's kind of playing you know eleven on ten. But, do you do you think the right move for? I, I I'm a firm believer that if you're the Titans right now. You have to franchise him next year. You can't. 
what is unless the rule you on have franchise? some way, unless you have some way to draft a quarterback, or you have sold yourself into thinking you can re-sign Mariota and he's better than Tannehill, whatever. I, which I, I think that ship has sailed and it's gone bye bye. Yeah, but you also don't want to give him the keys to the franchise. No, like I don't know that do I would that. trust giving him even a three year or four year deal. Um, you know, definitely not a four year deal. What What is the rule as far as franchising players that like were traded to you that year? Nothing. He's on your roster. You can franchise him next year. Okay, so if if there's because I thought there was something crazy about that, but if, if you can franchise him, no. Why yes. Why can't you franchise a player you trade for? At, that's that was my question. Uh, no, shit, yeah, you can franchise him. So I, yes, I would absolutely franchise him because I I don't think that they won uh, a lot of games this year. Because of Tanny, I think like he didn't make the major mistakes. There, and there were two games where they needed him to do something big. One was the home game against the Texans, where if they'd have won that game, they still had a shot at the division. Yep. Okay, yep. the home game against the Texans, he laid a complete egg and a complete dud. That red flag, big time. And then tonight. Yeah. Um, he didn't do anything to hurt himself against the Patriots, and that Patriots secondary is probably the best in the league. So playing poorly against them, I just don't know, is a knock on your your career, your resume. Um, he looked great against the Ravens when he had to, but he didn't have to do anything. Just super easy game plan for him because Henry just destroyed that team uh, like he did the Patriots. And then tonight, this afternoon, Henry couldn't destroy them but was still effective and efficient. But they they went – they put the ball in Tannehill's hands far more times – uh, than they have this entire playoffs. And uh, and he was okay, but he wasn't great. And a lot of those yards came in garbage time. You're down three scores, and you're trying to make this thing, a, you know, a, an 11-point ball game. You're trying to get it to two scores. Yeah. And, and so the Chiefs, you know, secondary is playing a lot of press or being more aggressive because they don't care if you hit them deep. And he hit, you know, some backup tight end for a 60-yard bomb and a touchdown. Well, yeah. When you only get 200 yards, you take those 60 away that you got in garbage time. You take that touchdown away, and you're 140 yards and one touchdown. That's not a good night. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Derrick Henry's numbers, by the way, 19 carries for 69 yards and one touchdown. Uh, by comparison, there wasn't – like the leading rusher for the Chiefs was Mahomes. Patrick Holmes, uh, yeah. eight, eight carries, 53 yards. And that was done early in the third quarter because um, yeah. he, he didn't run it again after that. Uh, the way that the Titans have won this year was by playing defense and running the football. And that's how they won all through the playoffs. And here, like the, the play that – or the, how about this, the drive that broke them. Not the play because there were multiple plays on this drive, but it was that two-minute offense by the Chiefs. And you felt like if they score here, this is ball game. Yep. Um, because at that point, the Titans were, it, you know, the Chiefs got the ball to start the second half, and yeah, they did, and they didn't score, but it felt like, okay, if you give up touchdown here, you are going down two possessions, at which point you know that they are going to get away from Derrick Henry for whatever reason, um, and they did. Like That's, that's exactly what they did. They're, um, let's see, let me look at the play-by-play here. I'm going to tell you this. Henry didn't rush the ball again after that for a long time, if the rest of the game. So, here's what they did. What was his rushing yards in the second half? Do you have that split? I, I, don't. I don't have that one. They they didn't have a ton of yards in the second half. Um, because it basically, you know what's nuts? The, the first drive that Kansas City had in the second half was 10 plays for 37 yards, and they had to punt. It, it took four minutes off the clock. Um but the Titans had six plays for 17 yards and had to punt right after that. They did Derrick Henry off right tackle for three yards, and then Tannehill incomplete, Tannehill uh, for eight yards to Humphreys, and let's see, they gave him a first down, so then they had Deion Lewis up the middle for four yards. Uh, then they got a, a penalty on Kansas City, do, uh, too many men on the field, so that gave him another first down. Derrick Henry right guard for four yards, Derrick Henry left tackle for no gain, Derrick Henry left tackle for no gain, Tannehill scrambles for six yards, and then they had to punt. Um, And then after that, it was, you know, you had a seven-minute Kansas City touchdown drive, then you had a four-play-and-out 
drive by the Titans, and then a seven-play, 88-yard, four-and-a-half-minute drive that put the game at 35-17, and it was done. You know, at, at that point, there was – you can't come back from 35-17 if you're the Titans. No. So, you know, the the biggest thing here was they they really went away from what they did. When they got down 28-17, to they came back that very next drive and had Tannehill pass – Tannehill pass, Tannehill pass, Tannehill sacked, and then a punt. Like, that's, you're not, if you're the Titans, you can't win that way. And, you know, you get away from your running game, and and obviously their defense could not stop. It, it, It didn't matter what they did on offense, I don't think, because they were never going to be able to keep up with Kansas City. That Kansas City could have scored however many points they wanted to, uh, but their game plan was to keep the ball away from, at, like keep their defense off the field and keep Derrick Henry off the field. That's it. And and they did that superbly all afternoon. Like after that first quarter and a half, they they really took this game over and it was that was all she wrote. So, um, at, was was there anything else? Like it, I I think we've pretty much nailed this one. Like is there anything else we need to hit on it? Well, I mean, we didn't talk about the Chiefs very much at all, but they, I mean, well, they look, Patrick Mahomes is a master. Yeah. I mean, he's he's the best quarterback in the league this year. I mean, he kind of got overshadowed because he got hurt and he didn't really play great all season. And Lamar just had a magical year. I think Lamar's special. I think Lamar's going to be in this conversation with Patrick as quarterback in the league, you know, for the next three or four years at least until somebody else pokes their head up and, and wants to throw their, their name in, in, in there. But uh, I, I think it's those two guys and that, and this, the rest of the league all playing catch up, but, yeah. but and, we and forgot numbers, about Patrick. He, he was hurt and he played kind of average to mediocre most of the year. Yeah. And before the playoffs, everyone kind of just assumed, you know, oh, well, it, it's his time was last year and he put up these unbelievable numbers. So, you know, we knew he was going to all regress and come back down to earth. And now he's just an average Joe. No, sir. He is still one of the most special quarterbacks we've ever seen play. And Andy Reid's system is amazing. Yeah. It really is. And they have so many weapons. I mean, that that's the other thing that Tom, Aaron Rodgers, breeze breeze has got weapons. Uh, you know, Jimmy G's got weapons. All he's got nobody, nobody in the league has weapons like Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he's got four or five guys that are all in competition to be the fastest guys in the NFL, and they're all on his team. Uh, Mahomes, 23 out of 35, 294 yards, three touchdowns, uh, ran eight times for 53 yards and a touchdown. Uh, And some of those weapons that you were talking about, They've got Tyreek Hill, Damian Williams, uh, Sammy Watkins, Demarcus Robinson, Travis Kelsey, Miko Hardeman. Um, I mean, he, he's he's got guys all over the place and all over the place, and they don't always get numbers every game. No, but, but you can't. But you, that you when can. you have that many, you're going to have a couple of weeks where two or three of those guys are just going to disappear. Yeah, but 100%. and then the next week, the next week they step up and somebody else disappears. It's impossible to keep up with. Yeah, Sammy Watkins was the uh, the leading receiver. Seven receptions, 114 yards. Tyreek Hill had two touchdowns. Uh, he had five carry, or five receptions for 67. Uh, Tyreek Hill also had, let's see, one carry for seven yards. Damian Williams, 17 carries for 45 yards and a touchdown. Uh, they they got dudes everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. And, and, you know... I wonder Nico what they Hardeman would be is, like. a, is a rookie this year. Yeah. That guy's one of the fastest guys on the planet. And yeah. he, he was obsolete tonight because everybody else got theirs. Yeah, you're right. And that's just going to happen. And that's, that's the guy that we thought was going to take Tyreek Hill's place in the, uh, in the offseason uh, because all that stuff broke around NFL draft time. That's right. And, but, and we thought Hardman was going to take Hill's spot, really. And now you've got both of them. Yeah. And it's just... We we can talk about Tyreek Hill's stuff off you know off the field all we want to, but on the field, uh, yeah. as long as he's playing, he is an absolute force. He's a beast, and uh, you you got a guy like that. You got a guy like Sammy Watkins, you know Kelsey, all these other guys. And Kelsey was not good tonight, by the way. <laughs> like 
three receptions for 30 yards. He was targeted four times, but he, he didn't look good on some of his blocks. He didn't look good on – like he, yeah, but Kelsey's never going to be a blocker. That's the one knock on him that the other great tight ends, Kittle and Gronk, used to have when it was those three guys and Ertz, um, those four guys as, like, the best tight ends in football. Kel- Kelsey's up there with all of them on ball-catching ability, getting open, being big and athletic, um, and, and, and and able to, to impose his will. But he, I don't know if he just doesn't give a damn or he's just physically not strong enough, like – He's strong enough to beat out a, a secondary guy because he's so much bigger than those guys. But when he has to block a linebacker or chip on a defensive end, I don't know, is it a strength thing or I don't want to think, but he doesn't block anybody. Uh, back to the Titans. Did you see what happened with Rashawn Evans? Like, I, I saw that he, like, ran off the field, like, to the locker room multiple times, and, like, I don't remember seeing him much in the second half. So I am kind of curious what happened. Yeah, I know he missed some time, and and he kind of came back and and then left. And I just kind of quit paying attention once it got out of hand. So yeah, it's I I wonder what it would be like if I don't think that it was just him being gone. I think obviously I don't know of anybody that can stop Kansas City once they get rolling. Nope. Um, I'm going to say this: but, we're going to have a hell of a Super Bowl though, yeah, because if right. if there's a team that's got the front seven to give Patrick Mahomes. Probably. Worry, but a good enough secondary to try to hang with some guys. The 49ers are it. Yeah, you got that right. I mean, this this really is best on best. Let's uh let's go ahead and move into that. Um let's uh let's talk about the 49ers 37, the Packers 20, and it was really not even that close. Uh th- this this score is a bit misleading. All of the 20 points for Green Bay came after the half, and I mean, San Francisco was up twenty-seven to nothing, and it was it was lights out. Uh, the biggest stat that you need to know is the difference between passing and rushing yards. Uh, if you look at the uh, the time of possession, Green Bay actually held the ball longer than San Francisco did thirty-one minutes, thirteen seconds, twenty-eight forty-seven. But uh, Green Bay had sixty-two yards rushing on sixteen attempts, so that's average of three point nine. Threw the ball thirty-one out of thirty-nine for seven yards per pass through two interceptions. Uh, there were three turnovers for Green Bay. But the, the biggest stat here was San Francisco only had to throw the ball eight times. There were six out of eight for 69 yards. And, you know, they got sacked one time, but they ran the ball 42 times for 285 yards. That's an average of 6.8. Like That's insane. Yeah, you, you and I talked off the air uh, about the fact that if you ran the ball 10 times for an average of like seven yards to carry, okay, well then if you broke a 60 yarder and then. Or not even a 60 yarder, you break a 30 yarder. Yeah, it just, you know, anything to like, you could, you could make it make sense. Right? That's right. I could, I could see how somebody with 10 touches could average seven yards to carry and, and, and have a really good game, but not an overly dominant game. Yeah. You have seven yards a touch, and you touched it forty-two times. Yeah, that's that. That, that Green Bay defense is ridiculous. Could not stop them. Could no, have, no. Not at all. And this is this is this game went could not have gone any more exactly the way I thought it was going to go. By the way, okay. Yeah, I made it clear. Didn't have a good feel in the Chiefs game. Had no earthly idea what would happen in that game. Um, had to make a pick. Struggled really hard to make one. Came up with something. Kind of half-assed it. This game. I was married to, I was sold to, I flipped your pick. I'm telling you. Yeah, you did. There, there was no way on earth that that somebody named Matt LaFleur is going to come in and beat Kyle Shanahan because Kyle Shanahan's one of the best coaches in all of the NFL. Okay, I know he's only been a head coach for three years, but but that's just because other people were too dumb to let him out of the building. Okay? Yeah. Um, I, can't, I can't control anything about that. <laughs> This offense, and what does Kyle Shanahan do? He has a zone blocking scheme like his daddy had, and running backs just find holes in there. You don't even have to have a dominant offensive line. They somehow, some way, these guys find ways to scheme run plays that just get open. And they've got receivers that are pancake blocking guys on their team. But it, everybody takes ownership of the run game. It's not just the O-linemen. It's not just the running backs. It's everybody involved in it. And the Packers have two good defensive players, two great defensive players. 
Yeah. But outside of the Smith brothers, they're about as mediocre as you get the rest of the way through. Yes. I and agree. you mean to tell me I got to block two guys and scheme up a run a game against two guys and the rest of them just let my dudes bulldoze them? That, that's easy for a guy named like Kyle. And, it's and just easy for him. Typically, San Francisco, like, they, they spread the, the carries out, right? So, Tevin Coleman goes down. We don't know if he's even going to be available for uh, for the Super Bowl, but he had he had six carries. Debo Samuel had two carries. Uh, Matt Breida had one carry, and Jimmy G had four for negative one yard. Like, that's – four of your carries went for a total of negative one yards. So, really, 42 could be – uh, could be thirty eight. I, I, I think I think his I think a lot of his carries he had to kneel the ball so that they're going to take away. But that but that's what I'm saying. Like it, you you get four carries for negative one for Jimmy G, and let's make this thirty eight carries for two hundred eighty six yards. That's yeah, three insane. three of those three of those four carries Jimmy G only rushed it one time because three of those four carries were the kneel downs. We're ne- okay, so even. Even more ridiculous. So he, yeah. So it was over seven yards a carry. Uh, it was absolutely over seven. If you take those three kneel downs out instead of 42 touches, you make it uh, 38, what is that, 38 touches, 39 yeah. touches. And then, um, and then yeah, you take out the negative three on that. Yeah. And that's uh, Raheem Mossart is the guy that, that really took the bulk of the carries today, which yeah. is, you know, it, it normally, like I said, they, they space them out. But he had 29 carries for 220 yards. His longest carry was only 36 yards. Yeah, it's not. It's not it, like yeah, he, he didn't break one out for 80 yards to help throw this off. And that 30 something yarder, he earned every bit of it. Oh yeah, I mean he it, it, think. You know what I like so much about the 49ers? They they do not miss tackles. Oh, like at oh all. no. They they are the best open field tackling team I've ever seen in my life. It's insane. They got it's- sloppy at the end of this game, but for three quarters of this game, they I'm talking if they touched you, they brought you to the ground. It didn't matter who it was. It's, I'll tell you this. So uh, you were gone uh, for the NFL draft covers that we did. Uh, yes. like we did our, our live thing for the NFL draft. I could not have been more wrong about Nick Bosa. I was dead wrong. Like I, I said, and I've, I've already mentioned this earlier in the season, but I thought that he had the potential to be a big time bust, uh, just because of the way things went at Ohio State and whatnot. I, man, he's injured and he does this and that. Like I, I thought that, I thought he may not be that good, and I was completely wrong. I, how much does he alone change this team? Because it's not like this team changed a whole lot. Uh, personnel wise, oh, I've seen season. this team change a lot more than you and I think. Just because we, we don't pay attention to all the additions, that whole front seven is the nastiest, best front seven in the league. Yeah, and it's not, and it's not close. And there were many a plays where he had it out tonight. They chipped him on the hip and popped him. Jimmy Graham popped him real good on the hip on a chip block once, and and he he sat out a couple of drives, and and they didn't miss a beat. No. I, I'm gonna tell you, he's a monster. He's an absolute monster. But that that I think this whole front seven is unbelievable. They put so much pressure out there. I was critical early in the year of the secondary. I I still kind of think I don't know how good those guys are because every throw that gets thrown out there, the quarterback has no idea what he's doing. He's just trying to get the ball out without getting killed. Well, Aaron Rodgers started out three of three, uh, passing. And all three of his first three passes were thrown behind the line of scrimmage. I was just about so to say like, for negative yards. Three yeah. of three for negative yards. I mean, Congratulations. It's, it's That's the best quarterback in football, everybody. Uh the the one of the many storylines that you will see this week will have to do with uh with D Ford. Uh D Ford played on the Chiefs last year. Uh everybody kind of blamed him for, you know, his offside penalty on the interception that that Brady threw that would have basically won the game for the Chiefs. And he left and went to the 49ers. Now he gets to play against the Chiefs. Uh, that That's one of the personnel moves that, that happened that maybe not a lot of people paid attention to. Uh, I'll tell you this. Sometime this week or next week before the Super Bowl, we, uh, we'll get John Roser to come back in off of the, uh, the Chris Vernon show. Giant 49ers fan, knows everything about this team inside and out. Uh, he'll, he'll be able to give us a, a rundown on the 49ers. And, uh, and we'll try and get somebody in on the Chiefs side 
and and see if we can get somebody to kind of fill us in. I, I don't we know. Have, we have be. too many Raiders and, and Broncos fans. I don't have any Chiefs fans. Yeah, I know. And right? Charger fans. I've got them that I, I could I could get connections to anybody else in the West right now. I need to find somebody. Oh, I might have a somebody. Oh, really? I'm not gonna talk about it here on, on the air because it's way over promising, but I might have somebody massive. Okay. Okay. We can we can do that. So we'll we'll try and swing that, but we Leading up to the Super Bowl, uh, obviously, if it was the Bucks, we would have T.J. Reeves in uh, through our Thursday podcast, all that kind of mess. But we got connections uh, to some dudes, on, you know, that cover cover some of the league and and or just fans of teams that know their team, yeah. inside and out. But you know, I will. I'm going to tell you this: uh, they open up the line at Circus half, Sports. Half point? At, no, they open it up at at a pick'em. Uh, okay. Circa. So out in Vegas, the first place to drop it was, and this was when it was twenty-seven to nothing. So yeah, they, they went on and started taking uh, taking bets on it, and it was a pick 'em. And the first wager that came in was a hundred and ten thousand dollars on the Chiefs side. So did not like, shock me. That, the Chiefs are already uh, minus one and a half as we as we sit here talking about this at ten thirty or ten oh three. I had a feeling. I had a feeling that um, it was going to open up. Close to a pick'em. I, that's why I said half point. I, I didn't, you know, I just assumed that, you know, this is about as even as a, of a game as you're going to get. I haven't broken it down. I haven't thought about it too much since it just ended. But I'm, I'm telling you, this is this is best on best. Yeah, it, it this is the is. best defense in the league, and it's not close against what has become and what I think always had the potential to be the best offense in the league. Yeah, no, you're uh, you're right about that. Uh, 49ers had four tackles for loss. Um, one was by Kwan, Al, uh, Kwan Williams. Um, let's see, Emmanuel Mosley had one. Nick Bosa had one. And Kwan Alexander had one. Um, Do all those fumbles team. count as tackles for losses? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they do. And they had to have more than that. They just math math where they had to. Because yeah, he missed. opened up three for three with three losses, three three tackles for loss because they were oh, negative you're yards. About the, uh, the passes, I, uh, I don't are know. those just sacks you're talking about? No, the, no, these are tackles for loss. They had three sacks. They had four tackles for loss. Uh, a, okay. a sack so the tackles for loss don't count as sacks. They Correct. don't count sacks. The the sacks were by Kawan Williams, uh, Nick Bosa, and Eric Armstead. Okay, so this is this is where defensive stats always weird me out on. Yeah. I know that they tackled far more people behind the line of scrimmage than 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 the first original three or four that you said. Yes, yeah, so I know for a fact that happened. Three three sacks, four tackles for loss, which are two multiple fumbles. Things. Yeah, had uh, yeah. I mean, uh, one one loss. Well, they, the, the, the Packers recovered them, but they still fumbled the football. Yeah, they had three fumbles, and those uh, were all for them, loss of yards. Uh, all by Aaron Rodgers. All by Aaron Rodgers. Mm, yeah. Man, boy. I swear there are people out there that are still saying he's the best quarterback in football. He wasn't this year. Um, he he was not. And now they won thirteen games. It's hard to argue, but when you got a third place schedule, yeah, yeah. That's, that's I just want somebody thing. to show me the good team they beat. That's all. I just uh, want somebody to show me a really good football team that they beat. They beat because the teams, I thought going into this game Mahomes. that they were frauds. They, uh, and I uh, think I was proven right. They were frauds. Everybody, uh, not everybody, but the the people that really pay attention to the sport knew that they were frauds. Like that's yes. Like the truth is, that they they were not that good this year. They didn't overly dominate anybody, uh, and we talked about it on the on the last podcast. Them uh, and the Seahawks. It's amazing yeah. that them and the Seahawks had like a weird game. I guess it wasn't really a weird game, but it, the game that they had was like the most normal game because they were the exact same team. Yeah. Neither one of them beat anybody great the entire year. And, okay. And they the Seahawks beat the 49ers. That was the great win. And but, but, they, the but they weren't part, dominant over anybody. No, yeah, for the most part, all their wins were were weird, fluky games, won by smoke and mirrors, and just kind of strange things happened. And that's it. Do you uh do you think this was Aaron Rodgers' last chance at a Super Bowl? I don't know that he ever had a chance at a Super Bowl this year, even knowing that he won thirteen games. I mean, it, you you had one game. He's, is he still going to make the playoffs in other years? So if you're going to call that a chance to win the Super Bowl, or is he going to still continue to play no, football? I mean, like, will, will this will this be his last NFC title game? Yes, I'll say that. Sure. That's I I think you might be right because I don't think he deserved this one. But I think yeah. I found out early on, but at the very beginning of the season, we thought the NFC was crazy deep and the AFC was top heavy 
And I think it was the exact opposite by the end of the year. Yeah. The NFC had one good team, or one great team, great team. And then I think the Saints are probably the, the second best team in that division that just just laid an egg in the wild card game. Uh, yeah, in the wild card round. Yeah. And then everybody else in the NFC was just okay. Yeah. And there was a massive gap between all the rest of them. And in the AFC, I mean, the Tennessee Titans made it to the AFC championship game. Yeah. I, I think it was just crazy deep. No, it, it definitely was. I think the the way I I thought this, those two conferences were were completely flipped by the end of the year. They, they just were. That's yeah. a fact. I agree with you. Uh, obviously, we will we will do a lot leading up to the ball game. We're going to do a lot of previews and all that kind of mess. We'll we'll talk a lot leading up to it. So right, this was only the reaction to the championship games. Uh, but yeah, we this is definitely best on best. 49ers, Chiefs uh, couldn't ask for a better Super Bowl matchup. I don't think going to be a lot of red in that stadium. So you're not going to know who's who's pulling for who. Uh, <laughs> Like you got one that's red and yellow, one that's red and gold. It's it's pretty similar stuff. So yeah, I'd, I'm happy it, with it. We need to make a mandate that 49er fans have to wear black, red and black. You can't wear red and gold. I'm good with that. That I'm way, that. that way we know who the hell you are. Yeah, wear wear your red and black if you're going down to Miami. Uh, I'm excited. You know what I saw uh, interesting in the in the Fox uh, advertisements? Yeah, they're doing the. Fox, uh, like the Super Bowl Music Fest or whatever that they do, they're uh, they're showing that live the night before on Fox, like Guns N' Roses and and all that kind of stuff. They're going to show it on Fox. I bet it'll do a fine number. I bet oh, it'll yeah. do a decent number. Hey, I'd I'd love to see Guns N' Roses on on TV. Like I yeah. I went to see them at the Superdome back for my bachelor party forever. No, they're just looking for content. What the hell else are they going to play on a Saturday night when no sports are going on? It's a fantastic question. There's going to be some some mediocre NBA game that doesn't matter because it's one of 82. Yeah. And 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 some college basketball game that's, you know. Well, and they're not showing God it God knows like, what's going to be great. They're so. not showing it until 11 p.m. Eastern time. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Is that when it starts? I mean, if they're doing it live, no, is that when it well, starts? It's not. Okay, so I don't think it's technically live. Uh, I think there's no way it starts at 11. Live. Um, well, no, I think Guns N' Roses is actually playing on, like, Friday night. Um, but they're going to show some of Guns N' Roses. They're going to show some of all the other bands that are playing. Oh, and then um, they're going to piece it all together. Yeah, I bet they'll make together. it look really good. Oh, yeah. and I'm, Because I'm they're not that. doing it live, I bet it'll be really enjoyable to watch. Yes, I agree with you on that. I'll miss all of it, but that's fine. Wait, yeah, you leave on Friday, don't you? Like, next Friday. Yeah, it'll be good. You're going to enjoy Disney, man. Like, are well, you I, know, even, I, I know I'm going to enjoy Disney. Are, are you even going to watch the Super Bowl this year? What day of the what 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 date is it? It's uh February the fifth uh, third. No, hold on. The third is a Friday. Oh no, I'm looking at January second. You leave on yeah, I think it's the second. Then no, I will not watch one iota of it. Yeah, and so uh, yeah, you're going to be in the park, aren't you? That'll be that'll be day two of being there and one of my child's birthdays. So, tell me this uh, before we before we close out of this. Um, so, day two, are you going to be like at Magic Kingdom? Do you have that scheduled out yet? Yeah, I've already got it scheduled out. I know where I'll be. Yeah. So, where where will you be that day? Uh, I might be able to catch some of it. That's not necessarily true. That'll be an early day, I believe. We're going to the Animal Kingdom that day. Oh yeah, then you'll yes, you you should be able to get back at least like by second half. Uh, cause at night there's not a ton of stuff going on at the animal kingdom. So, that's uh, when we went, man, we, one we of my most this. fun nights was, was, was when we went in the past was animal kingdom at night. Really? Yeah. We that's, rode that little, uh, rapids ride. I know that people really want to hear about this. So <laughs> if you like Disney shit, that's cool. If you got kids, um, we, we rode that little rapids ride and because there was like nobody in line at all, like as soon as you got off, you just go, you get, they make you walk out. Then then walk right back in, uh, just like loop around. So it's not you don't have to go all the way around the big long line. It was just boom, boom, and we rode it like seven times. And I was like, we're gonna ride the water ride right before we go back to the room because I just assumed it was gonna be busy like everything else. Yeah, we'll ride it once, get wet, then go back to the room, shower, go to bed, and uh, we rode it uh, at least at minimum seven times. And then finally, <laughs> at some point in time, I was just like, 
this is a lot of fun, guys. <laughs> I think Daddy is done. Yeah, yeah. Done. That's, I, I think anywhere that you go that day, uh, especially the, the few hours leading up to the Super Bowl, uh, yeah. I think you're going to be fine on lines. Like, I don't think you'll have anything to worry about. And then I do know that that night we have a really great dinner reservation, but that dinner place should have the game on. That will be fantastic. You'll at least it's get it's, it's not like a character thing or anything that's all Disneyed up. It's just a restaurant. Well, that's good. That's good. All right. So yeah, that that week after that, uh, I'll be handling a lot of that solo, um, but that'll be fine. We'll we'll get this in. I'll get somebody in to discuss it with me. And, uh, and we'll yeah. have a good time. We'll have a good time. You can't right. have Roser for that, though. You got to have yeah. somebody unbiased that's, to discuss it with you. That's going to be tough. Uh, but I, I think I can, I think <laughs> I can swing kidding. somebody. I'll swing somebody. We're, we're biased. As, I'm biased as hell. I'm honest. Yeah. But but you got to be honest. Yep. You got to be honest with it. You, you, you got to be honest. You can't try and be, uh, you can't try and be, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I guess unbiased. But uh, you yeah. can't, you can't try and do that and, uh, and not be honest about it. So, yeah. All right. Um, uh, that's going to wrap it up. Of course, this was the NFC and AFC Championship Reaction and Recap Show. Uh, go to winningcureseverything.com. You can check out all of our stuff over there, our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave us some comments. Tell us what you thought about these games. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, make sure that you uh, hit the subscribe button and leave a nice review. We always like getting those. We'll read those out uh, every now and then on the show. So make sure that you leave that and go over to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They are fantastic. Got six incredible sports books. Uh, we can vouch for them. They are wonderful, and they are all going to be showing the big game. So if you're looking for somewhere to watch it, that's the way That's the way to go. I'll tell you. Tunicatravel.com is the website. Go check it out. If there's nothing else, that will wrap it up for today's show. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.